This isn't what it looks like. Whilst it resembles the Nintendo Classic Mini, it is in fact a Raspberry Pi in a Nintendo wrapping paper. You've probably heard of the cheap Linux-based microcomputer before, but whilst it is designed for teaching school children the basics of programming, with a little bit of work you can turn it into a retro gaming device that usurps the Nintendo's own Classic Mini series. Best of all, you can play games from more than just one classic Nintendo system for less than the original RRP of one of these micro emulators. Right from the off, I think I need to be honest, this may not be the option for the technophobic. That being said, it isn't difficult to set up, you simply need a USB stick with enough storage space to hold the RetroPie installation files and some ROMs for your favourite games. ROMs themselves are actually quite a shady business, so you'll need to do a tiny amount of work to get the games you want. There are plenty of sites around the web that offer the ability to download these games, but due to copyright legislation, I won't be able to confirm or deny where best to seek them. Either way, a quick Google will uncover all the information you could possibly need. Where the Raspberry Pi differs from the stock Nintendo emulation boxes is that this is a nifty little console that is not just limited to the best that the Japanese console stalwarts have to offer. That's right, you can play PS1 games, Mega Drive, ZX Spectrum, and a huge catalogue more alongside the wealth of Nintendo classics. Emulation is relatively stable, with some hiccups for certain games being an unfortunate side effect, but with an online community of tinkerers and experts always on hand to help point you in the right direction, this is still one of the most complete ways to access video game history in one pocket-sized piece of tech. Another area this excels and usurps Nintendo's own mini emulation boxes is the out of the box ability to plug and play literally any USB peripheral you can imagine. It does mean that you can, like myself, buy authentic feeling replicas that give you the same controller layout and experience of the original without ruining the gaming experience. All you have to do is plug in your pad or controller and then map your keys accordingly, it's literally as simple as that and it works exceptionally well. Bluetooth connectivity also means that wireless controllers are available right out of the box, which means that the older PS3 pad is now the perfect component for blasting through the original Crash Bandicoot for instance. To get to this point of almost classic gaming perfection, you do need to add a few core pieces of kit to your collection though. You will need an SD card to store the games. A USB stick is recommended to transfer games from your laptop or PC, with a formatting process that can be done automatically so that you just simply drag and drop your ROMs into the right folder to access them once you've transferred them to your library. I'm using the Raspberry Pi Model 3, which still has very modest hardware, but is capable of running nothing later than the original PS1 games. The ability to run older games out via HDMI means that newer TVs and monitors will have no connectivity issues straight away. It also does mean that there's less cables, meaning you can have more time playing the old games that you love and know. This could be a great way to delve into a back catalogue of some of the very best games ever made, a great travel companion, or like in my case, a great gift from someone you know who likes classic gaming. So if you were on the fence about the walled garden approach offered by Nintendo's own mini console replicas, maybe the cheaper, slightly less accessible, but ultimately more flexible Raspberry Pi emulation box method could be next on your most wanted list. Thanks for taking the time out to give this video a watch. If you'd like to learn more about the Raspberry Pi and video game emulation, then I'll leave some links for you to check out down in the description below this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed this vid as much as I have making it, but I've kept you long enough, so until next time, I'll speak to you later.